Hi everyone and happy Thursday. So excited to have everyone here today for our second Lunch and Learn session. Today we're going to cover one of my absolute favorite topics and that is looking at streamlining processes with Business Central. Oops, okay, there you go. So we've got a lot to cover today. And what we're going to do is we're gonna first talk about kind of the basic requirements on how we're gonna access our business central data with inside of Power Automate. Then what we're going to do is we're going to jump into use cases and we're going to look straight at Power Automate. Um, fair disclosure here, I'm going to jump into the flows and we'll get kind of media inside of what we're discussing inside of the flows. Um, so a lot of times people will, I'll go through different types of examples, but we seem to want to hear a lot about or see the flow. So that's what we're going to jump into today. And I'm going to show you kind of exactly what I've done in some previous cases. All right. So first things is a little bit about me. My name is Mary Myers and I am the chief maximizer here at World Max. I've been in the tech industry for six years now, approximately six years. And what I do is I'm obsessed with extending, obviously, Business Central and Dynamics with the Power Platform. When I used to run small businesses, I had a bunch of different processes that were kind of convoluted, but I've always been really obsessed with saying, what is the quickest way that I can accomplish something? I like to think about working smarter and not harder. And so now what we do at World Max is we have different services that we offer to small businesses and to Microsoft partners that help you take Business Central or your dynamic system to the next level. We offer consulting and training services, um, and we really specialize in integrations and working on automating all of your approvals and various business processes from start to finish. All right, so like I said, we have a lot to cover today, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. First thing is, is whenever I'm working um, with clients, the number one challenge that we actually have is, how do I access my data? So with inside of a business central license, that's a dynamics license. And so you automatically get access to premium connectors inside of Business Central. So that can be a little bit complex and I don't want to get into a licensing, uh, you know, deep conversation, but we can have, like if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat around that and I will do my best to either answer them or get you answers around that because a while back, I actually did put a poll here on LinkedIn. I don't know uh, how many people remembered that or answered it. But in that poll, um, you know, it was asking about what the understanding for licensing requirements were and how familiar people were with them or not. And overall, the number one, you know, response that I got was that, you know, people really weren't sure how it worked. So what that means is if you have a business central license, for the most part, as long as you're working within Power Automate, you're going to have access to all the connectors. Now, <clears throat> you'll see some examples today where I can't run through a full demo of that flow because there's additional connectors, there's an additional programs that I'm using to accomplish flows and in that scenario, you may need a license for different products to access those connectors. But if we think back to what I'll call the early days of Power Automate, perhaps when it was still called Flow, um, some of the way that the licensing worked and the connectors were, were different, right? I mean, I think that's pretty safe to say that we're, we're always trying to keep up with the name and licensing changes with uh, Microsoft products. So in that we had different connectors that you could get for free. And then there were some more advanced ones. Like first one that comes to mind would be um, like an HTTP request or webhooks. Those were considered a premium connector or using something like AI builder. 
you have to have a license and it's a premium connector. So there is some complexity there, but if you're not using any other products, uh, or any other connectors, then you have access to Business Central and Dataverse with your Dynamics um, connector there. So also whenever you're building flows, let me share too. So if you're trying to use, if you're a partner, for example, and you're a consultant and you're like, okay, I've got my delegated admin license and I'm going to go in here and create a flow. You can't. You have to have a full licensed user and not to be confused in Business Central when you look at license type and it says full user. What I mean is you have to have an actual license. It can't be a, a delegated admin license. It has to be a regular named license in there. So that is the fun license concept or conversation that I'll get into for now. Like I said, if you have more questions on that, go ahead and leave them in the chat. Um, but other than that, that's kind of just like the basic scenarios. If you have a regular business central license, then you can easily go into make.powerautomate.com and access your business central connector there. Oops. All right. Let me go ahead and share my screen real quick here. Give me a second because what I want to do is just jump right into my uh, screen. Move this here. Okay, perfect. So the first case that I'm going to share with you today is taking a look at an instant flow. In Power Automate, we have instant flows, we have scheduled flows, and we also have automatic flows. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is a instant flow here for merging job cards. So if I navigate this back here, yep, we can see my screen here. Sorry, just making sure I've got all my screens in the right place here. Um, I'm inside of Business Central here, and I'm just looking at a job card. This was a flow that I created for a customer where they had a requirement where they wanted to be able to come into a job card and merge all of their purchase invoices and sales invoices that were attached to a job into one document that they could then send off. So what we decided to do is create an instant flow here. And we also had to use a couple different uh, connectors, which we'll show you. But here I am on my job card. And if I come here to automate, you'll see that I've got this flow here, right? These are all the different flows and some of these flows make sense and some of them don't. You can see that I've got, it says merge job invoices. To, oh, you know what, let me, ah, here we go. Make it so you guys can actually see, let's get some real estate here. Okay, let me show this again. So again, this is just the job card. And when I look across the front homepage here, um, if I come down to this automate, here's where we can see the different flows. Now you can see that I've got an option to create some flows here with inside of Business Central. If you're wondering, hey, Mary, I don't have this option. Or if you think, I don't want everyone in my organization to be able to have this option, then this is actually a permission set. So if I go into my users real quick here, let me show you. It is just this setup here um, that we can see. So it, it's just an automatic exact and it allows you to have that option there. And there's also a feature enablement as well. And so you can disable that or enable that from there. But in, for now, this is where I have um, this job invoice here. And so whenever I would press this, what it would come into here is it's going to create a side menu over here. One thing when I was trying to test my flows earlier for whatever reason, um, my screen wasn't working properly. So I'm not surprised that this is just circling right now which is another reason why we're not gonna do full demos today. And we're just going to look at the flow 
because as you can see, it's being incredibly slow and I'm not sure, quite sure why. So this is the flow behind it, right? So if we were, if that screen were to connect, it would have a little pop-up window and I could hit run. On the back side of that, here you can see we're in make.powerautomate.com and I've already teed up where I want my flow to be in here. Now, you can see here that it says that um, AI is not available for this type of flow. What that means is it's that new UI experience. As you can see here, the new designer is disabled. If you've been currently working in Power Automate for the last couple months, you'll recognize that we've gone through a change, right? This is the old way um, or essentially the old way that we used to build flows or the way that the designer used to look. And now we're used to seeing that, you know, updated version. But this one has too many steps. And that's basically what it says here as far as why we're seeing a different experience and that I'm not able to toggle back and forth. So one thing to notice about instant flows here is that this is my trigger and this is considered an instant trigger um, because I can go into Business Central, right, and trigger it on demand. And whenever we name those, here's the name of my flow up here. And so if you'll recognize, if you'll remember, whenever we're looking at Business Central, that was the same name as you could see on the different flows. So if you don't name your flow well, or if you have your flow loaded in here more than once, you're going to see those numbers in there more than once as well. So that's an important thing to know. Now, one thing that's interesting on a instant flow here is you'll see that my environment and my company name, those aren't actually required fields. Your instant flows can show up anywhere within your business central tenant. So that means it can be across um, environments or across com companies and even pages or tables. These are all various filters that I can have and it just allows how wide or small that button will be available across Business Central. So with this setup here, it's only available in my Sandbox 22, it's just an old Sandbox that I have, um, under this company and only on this page. If I were to remove this page or this page number here, it would be available throughout the rest of Business Central. Now for this flow, I'll just kind of walk through various parts of it to kind of explain what I did. Um, you'll see that I needed to just use this user information a little bit um, later on. But what I had to do is I could get my office profile based off of my Microsoft user ID in here, right? So we have that um, AAD authentication and that user, those intranet profiles. So I was able to just pass that through and then what I did here is I got, I'm using the standard V2, I'm sorry, V3 actions here in um, Business Central. And this is important to note because if you were previously using the V2 connector, they're not working anymore, right? They're now being deprecated. And I believe that's rolling out as of like this week. So if you're wondering what's going on with your flows, make sure that you're using the V3. And one important way that you'll know that you're being able or that you're using a V3 versus a V2 is that you're going to have access to your API category right here, right? So you see that I've got a V2 category. That means I am just using my standard Business Central API. And then what I'm doing is because I was on the job card, I know that that's the record ID that I'm going to use to pull from my project table. Now, here's one thing that I always like to share oops, as well, is this API documentation. As you'll see, I have this bookmarked. This is like my holy grail. There's some other great resources um, that are out there, whether there are some um, books uh, by some great community members that talk about some various things within the Business Central APIs. I just have this one bookmark because it's super easy. One is going to tell me, essentially this is my repository. Um, it gives me kind of the ins and outs and troubleshooting things, 
But really what I like here is this is my, this is going to give me my listing of all these standard APIs. So where we're seeing in Power Automate that V2, right? And then we have these table names. This, these tables align with everything on this resource here. So it also tells me, so for example here, when I'm looking at the project, if I'm wondering what properties or what fields are going to be available on that standard API, this is the resource that I'm going to use to be able to get a quick representation of it, right? And so we can see on here that these are the properties that are needed. So I just wanted to share that with you. I think that that's an important resource um, whenever we're getting started with these. So that's what I've done here because basically I want to go ahead and get this specific project. And that's what you'll notice that I'm using the record ID opposed to getting a whole list or whole array of projects. I am just getting one specific object here. Then um, what I had to do is initialize essentially an array because I'm going to create a bunch of, um, I'm going to create an array with all of those different files um, from that project. Now from here, what I'm doing is I've just gotten um, where I've got some of the different documents essentially that I was teeing up in this project here to put that in there. But what I'm doing first here is I have to go and get all of the sales invoices, right? If you recall, this flow is to get the unposted sales invoices for the jobs and then also the purchase invoices. So when I look at this one, it's a little bit different. This is actually utilizing the find records here inside of Business Central Connector. And one thing that you'll notice that's different here is that this API, you can see that I'm, I'm not using the standard Business Central category. I'm um, APIs. I'm using a custom API. But that's what's really great about this connector is it gives me access to all the different APIs that are in here. Now, I highly recommend that you check out um, Eric Hogart's Simple Object Designer if you haven't, because it makes it really easy to be able to access and create APIs inside of Business Central um, kind of on the fly here. So that's what I'll do a lot for whenever I'm teeing up demos like this. So what I have is I created an API that allowed me to have some additional fields. Um, so I was able to access the job planning lines. And then what I did here is I said, well, give me everything from this API, but filter it so that the job number that you only give me the job planning lines for the job that came from that instant record, right? So if you recall in Business Central, I went to a specific job and were to press that button so that it's only going to give me um, that the, the documents that are associated with that. What I also wanted to come in here and do is I actually, from those job planning lines, I needed to identify the sales invoices from those job planning lines. So as you can see from here, first I pulled from the job planning lines that, then I was able to just switch back to being able to use the, the two APIs, which I think is important to note. You can use, there's a lot of flexibility in my opinion when using Business Central and Power Automate because I can easily switch between standard APIs and custom APIs as we see here. They play really nice together. So for this one, all I've done is I'm using, again, a fine record. So I'm pulling an entire array, but I'm filtering it down by the document number that was found in here, right? So I'm kind of doing a lookup based off of that. And then I'm, I'm compounding my OData filters, right? Because that's all this is doing is this is just doing like a regular get records. If you're familiar with Postman, um, this would just be like your standard get. So you can use any of your regular OData filter contacts in here as well. So as you can see here, that's why I'm saying I want the number to equal this document number. I'm using my quotes and then I can compound it by using and and then put the another property that I wanted to look at as well. 
Now, when you're looking at these fine records, and I'm putting this number in here, that's where that API documentation really comes in handy is because if you don't have this property exactly right, they're going to run into a bunch of errors. It's going to come back and say that it can't find that property on that API. And so if you're having that issue, again, I would go to that API B2 documentation um, for Business Central. So after I got the sales invoices, then one thing that you'll see here is we're using this get image for Business Central. Um, so this is a new action or yeah, new action that came out, I'd say maybe within the last six months to year. I don't know. Time flies when you're having fun. So it made me a little bit older than that. Um, but what you'll see when you're using this get image action is that it has a pathway here, right? So again, you're going to identify your environment. You're going to identify the company and you're going to identify the API category. You're also going to then look at the path here. So as you can see, as I'm just looking at the sales invoices, and if I even look at this here, it gives me, these are aligned with all of the APIs that we looked at as well. So if I go to, where is my sales invoices? Yeah. So if I come in here to my sales invoices, you'll see again that we have these different properties that are on there. But what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to grab the PDF document. And then you see that I only have one option here. So from here, what we want to do is grab the ID for the sales invoice, because what this is going to do then here is it's going to grab essentially all the PDF documents that is using the incoming document functionality um, that are associated with that sales invoice. So that's how we go ahead and grab those documents. And then honestly, we do the same thing with the purchasing side. Um, but on this one, um, again, I had to use a standard, or sorry, a custom API. I did some filtering based off of some lookups and then compounded my filter options so that I could get very specific in that array that I was pulling out. And then, you know, one thing I would say that it could be a little downside in Power Automate is that sometimes we have to do uh, a little bit more work to get clean data. So as you see here, I had to basically do a select and a cleanup um, and then merge essentially so that from this array, I wouldn't I would only get unique numbers, right? I only wanted to get one unique number here. So I had to do a select and then a... Let's see here. This is big enough. Yeah, perfect. We can see. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Um, here's what I was trying to show you. Here's the equation here, right? And all this is doing is it was coming out of here and grabbing only unique numbers. And then finally, what this came down and does is that same thing that we did for the sales order one as well. And it's just grabbing all of our documents. Um, the sales order, we saw that we went through that same path for purchase. Um, we looked at sales invoices, but here we're just using purchase invoices. So that works the same way. And then what we did is we took the documents from the sales invoice and we added that to an array and then we're adding this as well, these documents. Um, from here, what we had to do is take these two big, large files and merge them together. Now, there's not a standard connector inside of business, I'm sorry, inside of Power Automate that would allow that. However, there's great add-ons. And this one, um, I used a product called Plume Sale. And again, for an additional, I think it was like a usage license, or you could look at usage license or a monthly license, we were able to merge those documents together. Then finally, just created a um, new document attachment. So this was creating an action, and I used the table for document attachments, used a file name, 
One important thing to note here is that you have to identify the parent type. So you can find this information on the API documentation for document attachments. So that's why I always will reference that that documentation is really helpful. And then after I created that document attachment, then I was able to actually update that attachment because then it had a parent ID with that document and finally send that to the sales customer. So there's a lot of steps in that one. You know, I think that a traditional developer would probably argue that they could do that a different way. And I'm not here to say that they couldn't. I'm just here to show you a scenario that worked really well for one of my customers as far as doing an instant flow in that scenario. Now, the next case that we're going to look at is in a scenario where, and I have this happen a lot too, where we're either working with a mixture of systems, whether it be an on-prem and cloud, or we're just working with maybe Business Central and another ISV program. And we're still using SFTP servers a lot. Now, whether that being taking data from Business Central and sending it to the server or daily having information from that server being automatically ported over to Business Central. Um, those are two different scenarios that we see. What you see here is I've just set up a reoccurrence of a flow here. Um, this would just be a scheduled flow. And then all this is doing is getting items. Um, for this scenario, I just have, this is that filter action. And to take a second back, when we looked at our other flow, if you're kind of new to, let me make this, oh, that's a bit big. All right, okay. <laughs> So um, if you're newer to Power Automate, again, you'll recognize that the screen that we were just looking at looks different than this one here. This one is showing the new UI. And um, so this is just a regular scheduled flow, but you'll see that it looks a little bit different. Again, I can identify um, the way that you'll select your information is just make sure that you have this blue square around whatever action it is that you're trying to configure or take a look at. So here we see that this is just a regular flow that will go every day. And then I can also select the exact time that I want it. And then all I'm doing is grabbing the items. Now this is that same find action or that we were getting to find a whole array. And maybe you're wondering, hey Mary, where are the filter actions that we looked at? If you come under here where it says advanced parameters, if I do show all, you'll see all the different options. And so here we have our filter query and you could just add a filter here. Now, some may want to look at only getting items that were maybe modified the day before, which is fine. You could use a combination of properties and expressions like we looked at in the other flow to really refine that filter option here. But in this scenario, I just said, give me all the items because in this particular requirement, they just updated an entire table every day. So we said, get all of the items, just give me everything. From here, I took that entire array. This is just a regular standard action of create a CSV tape or create a table um, based off of an array. So I just took that output and from here you can either identify specific columns or give all the columns. We just created a file and then sent it to an FTP server. Um, you have different connection references, right? Just like we would for Business Central. If I look at my Business Central connector here, Where are we at? So, sorry, down here, um, you can see that I've got my connection down here. And this is the same for this one. If you need to change it out, um, you can just go into the connections and change that. But this allows you to set up this server to whatever server you need, right? So for this one, it's actually connected to, to like a server that a um, client was demoing. 
And so you can see here that I'm just logged into the regular path, just like you would use FileZilla, right, to test um, an FTP server sending files in and out, or just like you would use those same credentials to log into something like FileZilla. That's the same way that you're going to connect into this SFTP server and interact with it this way. So you can see that I've got access to my pathway directory. And then all I did here is when I created this file, um, you can see here that I gave it, I just called it items. I used an expression so that I have a unique name every day, right? So I know that this is an items folder. It's gonna have a timestamp every day, and then it's creating a CSV file. That's the file that I created here. So I said, hey, whatever name, <laughs> that I'm create using um, in OneDrive, just create that same name here, which is really helpful because then it creates that nice consistency. There's no confusion, there's standardization in the way of the naming files and conventions. And then as you can see the content, I'm just having as the output from my CSV table. So it was just really simple to make this happen every day and this is actually what one thing that you can see here too is we've got copilot and this is actually a flow that's um easy enough let me do this real quick make i'll show you how easy it is to even use copilot to use something to create a flow like this so here we are back in make.powerautomate.com and what i can do is actually let me just change my environment real quick because I know I've got a connector here that I need. Um, so I'm going to say on a daily basis, get items from Business Central and create a CSV table, save that. Oops as a file and send to an sftp server so here we're using again copilot and being very very specific in what it is that i want it to do so let's see the options that it gives me so this is actually pretty close um I don't necessarily need the compose step here. I would have expected it to create a file. So actually I'm gonna say maybe show a different suggestion and see if it gets it right the second time. No, it doesn't look like that. So I could um, adjust up here, create a CSV table, save that as a file in OneDrive. if it gives me better option here. Yeah, this is closer, right? So I could say, <laughs> except now it changed this data source. So, okay, this one, this one we'll, we'll use here. Um, now this isn't unusual. Granted, it has SharePoint instead of Business Central, which I see that happen a lot for some reason. Copilot doesn't show any love to the Business Central Power Automate connector yet. It always wants to use something like Dataverse or um, SharePoint here. But as you can see here, it's in Power Automate, a lot of the actions are very similar across the products, especially Microsoft products. So what I can do is actually come in here and just type in Business Central to change my connector and do the same thing here, except I would probably do, so you'll see that get items is going to be an array. That'll be for all of them. And in Business Central, that would be the equivalent of find records. So I can just change this in here, map these in. And what I'm doing here, um, right, so I've just mapped this into here, and then I'm actually just going to delete this, and it's going to give me some error messages, as you'll see, but I'll just change this out, because all I did was change this, this source, and then refill in the information. 
I don't actually need this compose. So I'll just delete that. This would be allow me to essentially map this file to save it wherever I wanted to save. And then this is just me creating that same thing that I did before, right? I could say items. If I come in here to FX, this is going to be an expression. Um, and I can just do UTC now, hit add, and then do dot CSV to give me that file content type. And essentially, I can connect back in here. Um, give it a second, right? And as you can see, just like that on the fly with the help of Copilot and what an extra two minutes, you see that I just so easily recreated that flow that I showed you teed up previously. So I really think that this is a great way if you have to create files that you're sending in and out of an FTP server on a daily basis or on an instant basis, you can see it's super easy to be able to set this up and connect here. And this would be a great way, again, this would be a scheduled flow or something that you could have happen on a daily basis or on an hourly basis if you wanted it to just occur on a regular occurrence, but it didn't need to happen like every time an action happened, right? So this is a great example of that type of flow. And also what we're going to do, you know, take a look at now is looking at how wonderful the templates inside of Power Automate are for Business Central. Now, I've been working with this Business Central connector and with these templates since like 2019. And I remember when there was only like a couple hundred uses of some of these templates. They have done they, Microsoft, our, our great friends at Microsoft over there in Denmark have been working really hard over the last couple of years to make these templates even better. Um, and what I like to say is, so templates are a great way to start. Very rarely should you be creating flows, um, especially if you're a partner, right? If you're, if you're creating flows all the time um, for a particular concept, then you shouldn't start from the beginning, right? Like use templates. Again, it's about working smarter, not working harder. And so I always like to kind of start with the template and then you can build from a template. One of the most common cases that we see, I see for Power Automate in Business Central is going to be for approvals, very specifically purchase invoice approvals. So what I'm going to do is you see here that we've got these templates. Um, these are all business central templates that they have already set up in here. And you see they have even more. I think there's over like a hundred templates. I could be wrong on that number now, but I want to say that there's close to like a hundred templates. And as you can see here, this purchase for this purchase request for um, invoices has or this is the purchase order um, over here for our purchase invoices has only been used 698 times because they just updated these. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this one and you'll see that there's a couple different ones on like who's going to respond and that's why there's some differences. But we'll take a look at this one here. And one thing actually, let me circle back. As you can see, I can create it from here. And if I create it from here, it's going to ask me to um, fill in this information for the environment and for the company and for the approval. If I were to come into here, but I'm pulling Business Central back up real quick. I want to show you a different way because you can also create these templates from inside of Business Central. So if I were to come into here to, let's say, purchase invoices, for example. And <clears throat> essentially, if I come in here to access. Oh, it's already set up in here. 
Um, if I come into here right under automate and if I hit create automated flow from within here, I'm sorry, if I create approval flow, it's going to give me an option here of the flows, the approval flows that are specific for purchase invoices. That's one great thing about this. So again, we see the same one. We know it is because it's at 698. Now, what it's doing here is it is just asking me for, it's giving me the flow name um, and it's pulling all this information from here. So if I hit next, If I hit edit from there, it's going to obviously send me to Power Automate. Here's what I was looking for. It's only going to ask me right now, it's only going to ask me for who I want that approver to be from inside of here, right? So I'm just going to put this name. In future iterations, I believe in the April release, there's going to be an improvement in this. It'll, you know, inherit the uh, approver from within inside of Business Central. But from right now, if we just go from here. It will go ahead and it's going to create this entire flow for me. Now, <clears throat> um, the nice thing about it creating it from within here, if I come in and I look at my approvals, it's going to be this first one that I just created like 17 seconds ago. And if I hit edit, Now, as you can see here, it created this entire flow for me, which is super great. But one cool thing is it actually inherited the environment and company from where I was at in Business Central the what the rest of the what the the rest of the way through. Um, which is really helpful. I think, you know, one of the other things that I hear people ask for or wish that they had all the time here in Power Automate for Business Central is, hey, if I put this, if I put my environment in the first one, can it just go all the way through? And, you know, that sure would be nice. But typically we don't get that experience. Here we do. And so just running you through this template, what this does, um, so this button, whenever we hit the send approval button, that kicks off this approval here. Then what it does is if you can see this action here, it's actually looking at the workflow endpoint API. That's not the V2 API. It's a one that's specific for that. And it's the same one, obviously, that's attached to that trigger inside of there. So it goes ahead and it locks this record whenever we kick this off. And then the next thing that it does is it's going to go ahead and grab. This is really great. It grabs this URL so that we have a dynamic URL to put inside of, I'm going to close this up here, to put inside of um, our approval. Normally it's in here. Oh, here it is. Sorry. It's looks different now. So where we have this item link here, what you can do is what this approval will do is um, have a link where it'll automatically open the purchase invoice card inside of Business Central. We used to have to do a lot of formatting to get a dynamic URL here. So this has been a really great help. And um, so this whole flow, right, is kind of set up to do all of this. Now, one thing that I do want to share, right, like I was saying, is templates are a great place to start. But what I often get a request to do is to say, hey, I also need to get um, the attachment, right? I don't want just the record. I also want to go ahead and put the invoice attachment. If there's a purchase invoice that somebody sent me, I would like to look at that invoice in that approval as well. And so you can do that, right? Just from here, we created the template to start off with. And then right here, we're grabbing the endpoints. If I come in here and do a get record, oops. we'll try to go through this super quick. 
what I'm doing here. And so this is where you normally have to load everything, you know, back in here. And I'm just going to grab my standard V2 APIs because I want to grab a couple of things on here first. I want to actually grab the purchase invoice. Um, this record just triggers the event happening, but it doesn't give me any of the properties for the event essentially that happened. So what I want to do is go ahead and grab that information. And then um, I'm just going to grab the row ID from where that happened. That's going to give me the specific record for the purchase invoice that's being requested. And here, I'm going to update the name to say get purchase invoices as well, just so I have a differentiation between these two get records. Then from inside of here, what I'll do is do add an action. And what I'll do now is I'll do find records because I actually want to look up the attachments for the purchase invoice. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just getting my information with these standard actions that we use. And I know I'm going kind of fast here, but I'm looking at the time and I don't want to run out. Um, so we have document attachments, right? Again, this is all standard APIs that I'm using. And then what I'm going to do here is, I'm, again, I'm just going to add some OData filters. So for my filter here, for my query, I'm going to... I know that I just want to get the document attachments that are equal to um, this to, to my purchase invoices here. So let me grab my ID. So grab this is saying get all the document attachments where the parent ID is equal to that purchase invoice. And I also have to tell it what the parent type is, right? So again, you can get all of this from your API documentation. I'm just gonna do a quick copy and paste here. So this is what I'm doing, right? I'm just grabbing the document attachments and I've grabbed some other invoice information so that I can pull that down here. And I'll call this find invoices. All right, now that I have essentially this array teed up, what I'm going to do is do a, another action and I'm going to use that get an image, nice little action that they created for Business Central. I always like to put the name of the connector in here first. I find that's easier. And then come in here. So I'm getting this get image. Again, we'll just run this information down here. And if you recall from before, we're just going to grab in here into our path. We're going to come down. We're going to look at our purchase invoices. And we will look this time. We're going to look at our document attachments, though. And then we're going to grab our attachment content. And when I do this, you see that it grabs open two more area or pops open two more parameters. And what I want is I, this is why I always rename my steps as well, because I need to grab the ID for my purchase invoices here. And then this one is going to be for my document attachments. So I've got an ID for both of these. And then Essentially, I would move the rest of this up in here because if I were to just, oops, let me move this up real quick because otherwise it'll get mad at me. All right, so now that I'm inside of here, what I can actually do is add an attachment and and call this whatever name I need this to be. Really what you're looking at here though is this is what you want. This is then going to allow you to have that invoice 
from your purchase invoices be sent to that email. So then whenever you're sending that purchase invoice approval email, you're having a link to the record in Business Central, but you've also used the APIs, just the standard APIs to go ahead and grab that image as well. So if who's ever actually approving that purchase invoice can look at the invoice and not have to jump to Business Central because most likely they're gonna wanna look at that invoice as well. Now let's go ahead. Um, I'm just about out of time here. So what I wanna do is switch back to this and go ahead and I just wanted to take some time um, with the 10 minutes that we have left here and open the floor for any questions. Um, there was a lot that we covered here, so I just wanna share that and also share you know this qr code for everyone to connect with me as well if there's something that you've seen here today that you're like yes my company absolutely needs to have this and we need to get started today go ahead and connect with me that'll bring you to this little screen that shows um up at the top you can connect with me on any one of my social media platforms or you can also go ahead and make an appointment so that we can get you started on your automated processes in Business Central as well. So I'll go ahead and open the floor. Are there any questions or any comments um, about today's session? And was this helpful for you guys? Let me pull it open. I'll go ahead and stick around here for a second and see. Let's see here. Is there an API to set an image so someone could take a picture on their phone? Um, you know, that would be more of you could you could use that i think that'd be like a post actually you would have to use a combination of a power app and those apis to be able to combine you know the two of them because you would use um essentially like an app right um to be able to first collect that picture and then there is like the regular api card so i'm thinking if you when you say set an image instead of a document attachment inside of there, there would be like a document card or like a like a picture card. Is that I'm not really sure if that's what you mean? But there's between utilizing that image functionality um, between document attachments and images, you can usually combine a couple of them to be able to to get what you want. It's just usually a matter of playing with them. And I'd really lean into looking at that documentation um in that api in fact give me a second i will throw this url um i think i can put this in the chat give me a second i'm trying to figure out still the uh navigating linkedin live sessions can i throw a comment in here yes i think so api doc Cool, hopefully you guys can see um, the API documentation that I just threw in there. If not, feel free to send me a message. Happy to share um, that information as well. Any other questions? I don't know how to make that go away now. Hi, perfect, just figured that out. Awesome. Well, um, I hope that you guys again found this information, this session to be super helpful. And we will be back. Um, I think we're actually going to take a small break next week because when I looked at my travel schedule, I'm back on the road and I think I'm going to be on a plane during this time. So we'll take a small one week break and then we'll be back. And in that next session, um, we're going to, we've got two more sessions that we're going to cover. One of them will be creating custom GPT responses. So we'll be using um, Copilot and Power Automate, and we'll be um, using that to qualify sales leads. 
inside of our, your CRM. And then we're also going to take a look at, I'm going to have um, Tiffany Allen. She's amazing. She's going to tag along with me on one of our sessions. And we're going to talk about what it looks like when we're looking at automating processes. There's so many different options. Like, do you look at using something like Power Automate or the Power Platform? Do you use a custom ISV or do you go for straight up custom development? And as a, you know, end user, how do you know what's your best solution? So we're going to talk through some of our opinions um, and experiences in that. So we're really having a lot of fun with these LinkedIn um, live lunch and learn sessions. Hope you guys are as well. And we will see you guys back here in two weeks. Thanks so much.